You there, boy. What day is it? Why? It's Christmas Day! Pixel Rips' union prevents him from working on Christmas. I'll have to do this one myself. Welcome to the Helmet Cut Recap. My name is Loy XP. Pixel Rips is away this week, but he still helped a lot with writing the script. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Happy holidays to you and yours. As for me, getting this video out on time will be my Christmas present. So let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Habitcraft server this week. Unfortunately, it seems all the Empire's people will indeed be home for Christmas. Since the rift started shrinking last week, the guests of Hermitcraft decided to play it safe and just go home. And not a moment too soon, by that time the hole in reality was just the size of a single block. Fret not, before they left, the whole gang has an incredibly Merry Christmas if Kaplan 135's video is anything to go by. It really is a series of fun vignettes, including of course, that time Orion sound had the crew Carolyn and the audience hollering. Ay ay ay, buenos dias, I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas, I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. Jimmy, come home! He's at there, I see him! He's, He's been, been looking at- I see the hand! The bottom of my what? The piano they're standing at is actually its own whole story with how the dragon heads for it came about. An Eminem tribute may or may not be involved. It's a whole mess. The trick to the Empire's fun vacation, of course, is that the people building the Christmas district also participated in the Secret Santa event. And they may not have had much in the way of resources to give, unfortunately. That's probably why in his stocking, Kapfen got a gift card to his own shop for Christmas. We got a Green's gift card! Hooray! <laughs> a gift card! After all, we own the green shop, so yeah, we can use this at our own shop to pay ourselves some diamonds. So thank you, whoever left this secret Santa. It is much appreciated. Thank you for the diamonds. Then again, maybe on this server you don't want the resourceful ones to be the ones gifting you anything, because that's how you end up with a crew of evokers at your base. No, this has nothing to do with this season's grisons, actually. This is just I, Jevin, perpetuating their beef with Zombie Cleo. This is going to be very challenging, but I think it's going to be worth it. You know, it's all friendly competition, and I do want to say that if Cleo loses any items, I will replace them. It took quite some effort, but Jevin was able to not just gather up the choir of evokers, he also convinced them to stand behind this inconspicuous wall of sand. Sand drops as an item when falling onto a slab, so this is a very satisfying way to unveil the murder friends. Unfortunately, for now, Cleo just passes by the thing, because it's, well, only the most suspicious thing ever. I'm looking at that and I'm going, that's a job for lava. If ever I heard one, you can hear it! Jeff, please! Seems like this will go into the next week's inbox. Until then, I, Jevin has to figure out what to do with his own Kinder Surprise package. For Secret Santa, the Empire's people have gifted him a whole entire child. Here is a child, his name is Tom. He is now yours. Your, he is yours now. Remember, a child is for life, not just for Christmas. Please take care of Tom. Okay, guys, karma. Sometimes a family is a blue slime and a pile of sticks, and that's sweet. Now the reason Zombie Cleo is too busy to deal with the Just Hand Magicians is the central Christmas diorama she's doing in front of the Secret Santa sleigh. Because uh, I need your heads to make small children, because, you know, that's the most important thing we've got going here. There's only so much time before the bells, and there's so many heads to gather from across the server. After all, it would be a shame if the guests leave before she has the chance to belittle them. Oh, my mistake, that actually is supposed to be N little. All the armor stands are small and cute. Also, Jimmy is a toy and even smaller. She's also the one to help Ollie put together the dragon head piano, and that crime won't be forgotten either. I, I guess there's a way for it. Like, hang, on, it hang on, hang on, hang on. So the keys are more at the back side of here, right? Turn it around. Oh. <laughs> and then put something on the back, like a, like a wall. <laughs> As her secret Santa victim is BWO, she gives him a run for his calcite and strings together a tour through the server's landmarks, note after note until the final gift, at the end. He actually assumes that it's from Pixel Rifts because of the British spelling, and though Pixel Rifts is flattered, he thinks all the player head decorations and sugar box should be a dead giveaway. An undead giveaway, if you will. BWO was down with the sickness for the entire time the Empire's crew visited the server, which is why he emerges from his cocoon to discover he has a secret Santa treasure hunt 
flopped down on his doorstep. We'll blame Pidapsa's Ups' fuzzy thinking on the flu. And either way, it doesn't seem to affect his building ability, as he starts a custom biome around his cyberpunk temple base. And we get a nice Beat Ups Ross take on how to build little happy trees. Because, you know, you made it that way, which is kind of nice. I like that. I think a little scraggler tree like this is gonna look nice in this biome. <laughs> and then just beat the devil out of it. In a show of Christmas hospitality, XB Crafted has decided he'll let some of the villagers roam around the cave base instead of just tucking them in the dark hole somewhere. Still, for a while he has to tolerate the pitter patter of tiny feet and watch various distificates acting out a silent movie. But before long, the silence is broken by the voice of Keralis, which is like a bad signal for XB Crafted collapse. Together, they walk out who to blame for Grumbot's shenanigans, Keralis tours the latest additions to XB's caves, and XB denies all accusations of blowing up anything in or around Keralis' base. Yes, even the tree farm wasn't used. Not TNT spent. It's funny because it's a duper. So, uh, so yeah. you know what? Like I said, there's no proof of anything. Keralis is all too happy to be home, though maybe not as happy about saying goodbye to Mythical Sausage. Their parting gift is an automated tree farm, just like the one Keralis has back home at his base. Need to bone mill it! I'm bone mill it! Bone it! Bone I'm it! boning it so hard! Is their goodbye as tearful as Sausage and Pearlescent Moon? No. Am I emotionally prepared to talk about that one? Also no. Though if you wanna talk plot, We've got two whole full symmetries to go over. You may have noticed we've been covering both Hermitcraft Falls and Empire Falls' videos through the crossover. And it's a little embarrassing to admit it was my headcanon that both Falls are actually the same person, just time traveling. Turns out I was off by a long stretch. Falls reveals a bountiful harvest of war in her video and explains that the other Falls is in fact originally from Hermitcraft server. Having eventually become murderous, Other Falls was apprehended, treated for whatever is going on with her, and finally sent to the Empires, after it turns out that no prison shall hold her. And well, one day my guard was down, and she escaped. And that was it, the lab was a mess. She took it out on me, and the lab, and the people working there, and, well, you've seen what's left. Now, the rift has been tweaked to not allow Empire Falls back in, and Falls Symmetry of Hermitcraft swears to deal with her personally, if need be. Which is just another installment of my favorite show, Hermitcraft! Go to therapy! Please, just go to therapy. They go ice boat skating. That's also nice. Cheer, I ride! Oh, yeah. snowman. I keep ah, hitting other a, people and things. Ah. It's okay, it's like Peggle. Yeah. Foss's ice boat course through her base is finished, and it's really funny to see the mass of players clog it in several places between the high-speed joyride segments. The ice sculpting skills come in handy when delivering on her secret Santa obligations. Falls covers a couple of greens, floating boulders in snow, and leaves gifts and a cute snowman for him to discover. It looks like he's squinting. <laughs> Which kind of terrifies me, I'm not gonna lie. Green instead finds a pile of coal in his basement and claims it as his own. I wouldn't be that mean though, or would I? I got coal? I... Oh! There's not just coal here, there's gold! Ah, uh, that's nice. In reality, it's somebody else's gift for Joel, but I actually really appreciate the introspection of finding coal in a present and going, yeah, I have been pretty naughty all year, that checks out. Anyway, imagine how bad you gotta be for Santa to bring you a whole ghast. Not related to at all, I buy now sells terracotta. And despite Impulse having enough money that he could probably have paid us for that blatant advertisement, he's still finding ways to make more diamonds. But it's season of the giving, and he gives Gemini Tay a plot in the store so her presmarine shop can be relocated from the throne room of the castle to a more convenient retail location. No, wait, wait, wait. People are buying out of your shop inside the castle? Yeah, well, I'm the only prismarine shop on the server, <laughs> so they're desperate. He also gives Oli a tutorial on how the heck Hermitcraft does their magic with music discs. A crime which will not be forgotten, but admittedly he did only have one chance, one opportunity. Tedious.
After following a suspiciously rhyming Secret Santa treasure trail left to him by Jimmy Solidarity, Impulse leaves both a prank and a present for full symmetry. It's the return of Gasta Claus! This actually makes me so happy. Who this time is basically a piñata. There is a chest of valuable things inside of him, which Falls hilariously can't actually get to. For whatever reason, Falls wants to actually keep the hell spawn, but can't open the chest inside of it without removing the guy. Impulse, come on, you don't gift pets for Christmas. Doc M is in the process of discovering that a dragon is in fact a high maintenance pet. And this one needs its flight plan adjusted every few days or it'll start to drift back towards the center of the world. <laughs> this was such a bad idea, Doc. Why did you put the dragon in the world? <laughs> then again, it's enough for Green to hit it with the snowball to mess up the entire shindig. Good thing Doc had the countermeasures planned for a while. What happens if I hit it? You don't need to find out, you don't want to find out. Alright, you, you, you called for it. Alright, alright, alright. I'm sorry! Whoa! <laughs> I saw one frame of a creeper. Oh yeah? <laughs> and then it vanished. <laughs> His comment section is gotten him into becoming a zookeeper for all the bosses, which reminds Dog that he still has a warden trapped in a bedrock hole somewhere, something he could probably try with a wither. For now, with the help of Slimestone Genius Pingu, he has the smart idea of building a sled flying machine to drive the other dragon over to Christmas District. Because there is the other dragon. We didn't mention last week that there is one, but there's two. And the dragon has the smart idea of just obliterating it before it builds up speed. In a stark contrast, Zedaf struggles to get murdered by an alley. The little half a heart, don't you hide from me! And come back up here now, honestly. It's the old phone's free trick. Master has given Ale a pair of pants, Ale is free. Become ungovernable and all that. A much more elaborate mob-powered murder is the trick set of pulls with how a pig can be ridden but also led by two different people at the same time. At first, Pigs Lyrics and him only accomplish two very confused piglets, but later they gather up a good dozen of assorted Hermitcraft and Empires members, put them into a single giant caravan of pigs and try to complete an obstacle course. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was supposed to be the easy post. obstacle. This is amazing! Oh, yeah. We're slaloming, wow. this is perfect. It's slalomying, actually. The varying results do not stop them from the next idea. What if instead they try to caravan through the sky? And really, if all your friends jumped off of a cliff on a pig, wouldn't you? I think we may have proved that the maximum you can do this oh. with dangling is two. <laughs> yeah. 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 A larger contribution of pixel riffs is David the Copperfield. Raise your hand if you just got it. Haha, <laughs> funny. Moving on. Exuma Void and Pix finished the Redstone Super Contraption this week. And a full run of it returns just fine, with barely a block left unweathered. Well, I don't know, but um, I just noticed that not only is the flying machine back with no blocks, there's no blocks in the system, so... Oh, I must have left that one there then. Thanks, thanks for pointing it out. I'll, I'm gonna yeah, crack no on. Way. Though it isn't the copper that Exuma wants from the drowned, for once. To make his base more friendly for navigation without an Ultra, X fills the spine of his giant skeleton with water and needs the conduit power for that whole entire thing. Naturally, the Nautilus shells for the conduits are a drowned drop, and X builds a river-based drowned grinder in the sky. Pretty unique application of what usually would be a trident farm, but also why wouldn't you just fish for them in that exact piece of water? The answer is because murder, it's, it's always because murder, guys. The while Exuma is hunting for the Nautilus, I am putting him on the naughty list because he is the one who gave Oli the dragon head for the piano. That singing session is a server-wide conspiracy. We you enabled my song. Christmas music. You're, you're welcome. I did enable it. I helped you and it's amazing, by the way. Vintage Beef's card game is beginning to look a lot like finished. With Zombie Cleo's card completed and only his own card left. Reminder, his feeling is in the alphabetical order. So yes, Zvintage Beef's. My favorite Hermitcraft member. I'm kidding, of course. Etho is the greatest of all time. He's been expanding the armory with a few more weapons and armor cards, and Etho even swings by to help him figure out how to shuffle the deck properly. 
With the draw mechanism all figured out, Beef calls on iJevin for gunpowder delivery. And boy does iJevin deliver. Take what you need. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> this is like a tenth of my storage, so we're good to go, and if you need more, I can provide as much as you need for the rocket. The fireworks are all for coin flip mechanics, where a creeper face means heads, and a red ball means go fish. Expect the game to be playable in the new year, and for the meta to emerge probably a week later. Wait, I figured it out. Forget the opposing hermit thing that just complicates things. Puppetry uses a move from any of their AFK hermits. And finally, there's Grian, whose secret Santa shenanigans are wide and sprawling. He does find forces gifts, and finds them quite adorable, really. But his own target is Pearlescent Moon, and what better way to prank the service cleaning lady than with a game of 52 pickup? To that end, Green dumps his whole entire life worth of items into a single box of chests and traps a charged creeper in the middle. A charged creeper he got by annoying the cam until he launched one at them, by the way. There's one there. And success. Now we need to get one of these into that. So when Pearl finally stops by to clean up Green's chest monster, the monster simply blows up in her face, scattering items across the place. It's so bad you can actually see the frame rate drop in Grian's video. <laughs> You're not gonna make it! No, I'm not! <laughs> oh, you haven't got enough shulkers here to clean this up! <laughs> How could you do this to me? <laughs> Minecraft items despawn within 5 minutes, so the two have to quickly and panically put the mass back into some chests, lest Grian loses any of his hundreds of very necessary items. But at the end of it all, the rift seems to be really puckering up. They bid a loving goodbye to the hermit craft and hermits, and the year closes on this cute and bittersweet note. And my heart grew three sizes that day, killing me instantly. Um, I'd just like to say that this has been fantastic fun. My name has been Pixorifs. My writer has been Zloy XP. No! Captions <laughs> on this video were provided by Liar. No! <laughs> I can't believe it. Thanks for watching. <laughs> it's uh, the joke that keeps on giving. I'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.